Hey guys, how's it going? Tufty here, and I've been wanting to do a 10 tips video for Heavy for a little while now, and with the Heavy update right around the corner. What better time to celebrate our chunky little friend than now? And what better way than a 10 tips video for Heavy? I'm excited for the update though. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be out probably tomorrow. Whatever day you happen to be watching this video, the heavy update is probably gonna be out tomorrow. Can you imagine if it's anything like the pirate update, imagine the servers, heavies as far as the eye can see, a few hoovies sprinkled about, and then those two spies farming their brains out on a 72 kill streak. It's gonna be awesome. For this video though, I got your help on Discord and on Twitter, so thank you for all your suggestions and feedback. I also scoured the internet and did a bit of research to make sure this is the ultimate guide for the heavy. Before we jump in, I wanted to take a very quick look at the weapons available to the heavy. I've put together these tier lists. Now these might not be 100% accurate, they're somewhat subjective, but they help give a good idea as to which weapons are the safe options. The stock minigun, the Tommy Slav, the sandwich, the banana, these are all really good solid weapons that you can't go too far wrong with. For the melee weapons it was a little bit more difficult but this was kind of the consensus from you guys based on your feedback as to which melee weapons you thought were viable. Okay we're going to kick off this with a speed round of five really simple quick juicy tips to get you started. Some of the obvious ones, so number one, jump just as you're spinning up your minigun, especially when you're going around corners. It allows you to travel a little bit further, a little bit quicker, and there's no downside. Number two, eat with your back to a wall or a corner to avoid the pesky spies while you're nomming away. Number three, you can use the cart to push you a little bit faster, especially when you're crouching or if you happen to be using the brass beast. Number four, spam crouch, especially when you can see a sniper in the distance. It may just put them off their shot. And number five, you can body block enemy ubers if you are also ubered yourself, which can be very useful. Okay, let's crack on with the main event, 10 tips for heavy, I hope you enjoy. This is probably the most important component of a heavy's gameplay and we just had to put it at number one. A heavy is all about his positioning, his game sense and of course a little bit of tracking sprinkled in too. I've put some examples in the background here of some really good positions I like to use, but here are some good pointers for finding a good position. It's useful to have your back covered for obvious reasons. Ideally, you wanna be working within your effective range, so that's kind of mid to close range without any long range sight lines, and we'll come to this again later on in the video. You want a large field of view, and what I mean by that is you're not just defending a tiny narrow corridor, so this allows you to have a bigger impact on the game. You want to have the high ground where possible. The high ground is generally always a good option, especially when playing against soldiers. And sometimes unusual or awkward angles can be really awesome too, because it takes the enemy that little bit longer to kind of spot you and react. And actually a good position for the heavy is not too dissimilar to a good position for a sentry gun. When it comes to the high ground, even a small advantage can be useful, so seek it out wherever possible. And being positioned next to a ledge can have other benefits too. The heavy of course can't move very fast, so what you can do is use gravity to your advantage. So either dropping off that ledge when you feel like you're in danger to dodge incoming fire, or alternatively using that ledge to help get you into the action quicker and ambush the enemy. As well as finding good positions, it's important to know the right time at which you should relocate. When you've been spotted, when you're getting a lot of attention and the enemies are focused on you, it might be a good time to find another position. And this is something you should be constantly doing throughout your gameplay. Here's a very simple example on bad water. I'm applying pressure to the enemy here as they come out of spawn, but here I noticed that a demo man has spotted me and he started taking shots at me. So I'm just gonna reposition to the left here and continue from another angle. When repositioning or moving around a map, it's often a good idea to hug the walls and avoid getting caught in the open. By remaining close to the walls, it means you're a little bit more out of sight and it often gives you more options for cover. Watch how as I roll out to mid on snake water, I'm just hugging the right hand side of this map, sticking close to the wall so I'm out of sight and I have plenty of options for falling back or things to hide behind if I need them. One final thing to bear in mind when it comes to positioning, in regards to the Uber, you need to think to yourself, am I in a position where I can be effective here? And often it's the case that actually, the best option is to close the distance first, get closer to the enemy, so you can have a bigger impact on the game.
You've likely heard by now that the Heavy likes to shoot from his eyeballs, so you can use this game mechanic to your advantage, making sure wherever possible you're behind cover and shooting over things. I've put some great examples in the background here, and the reason positioning and finding cover is so important is simply because you're not able to dodge like other classes, so this is your main means of defence. As we've already touched upon, as well as finding cover to shoot over, you should also be kind of hugging walls, remaining close to cover you can hide behind entirely. Such of these panels you can see here on upward. If I see a sniper in the distance I can immediately move myself back around these to safety. And finally bear in mind that of course the car can be an awesome option for taking cover. It's the perfect height for the heavy so you should be using this in your gameplay as much as possible. Basically turn around a lot. If you've played any amount of heavy, you'll soon get very paranoid about spies because they absolutely love hunting you down and you make a big fat juicy target for them. You need to be checking your back at regular intervals, especially when you first come out of spawn or if you find yourself getting too focused on an objective. Anywhere where a spy could be camping, check your back and better still protect your back where possible. Keeping your back to a wall or having it face a ledge can be really useful too. If you spot a spy attacking your medic, you should of course make it your priority to take out that spy and help your medic out and as with any class in any video game it's never a good idea to stay still even if you're not particularly going anywhere it's better to keep moving and be as unpredictable as possible and it's not just spies who like to sneak up behind you take a look at this clip here it's a little bit ridiculous first of all i catch a scout trying to ambush me and then a spy sneaking up behind me surely that's everyone i need to worry about then i hear the sound of a demo knight charging towards me terrifying and then a soldier flies through the air and lands on my head so you really have to be very twitchy as a heavy be super hyper aware of what's going on around you and check your back as much as possible Ambushing is a great strategy for the heavy, and of course the Tommy Slav is a great option for this playstyle. By ambushing the enemy and getting the drop on them, especially at close range, you do so much damage so quickly to the enemy that they won't have a chance to respond. If you're using the Tommy Slav, you can pre-spin when you think they're coming so you're ready to shoot quicker, and also there is a little bit of damage and accuracy ramp up that you can negate if you're pre-spun up. Essentially, all you need to know here is that after one second of being spun up, your accuracy and damage is as good as it's going to be. So where appropriate, make sure you're spun up in advance. In fact, the spin-up time of the Heavy is one of his greatest weaknesses, and meeting an enemy head-on not being spun up is a recipe for disaster. But yeah, playing a semi-flank type Heavy and waiting for the ambush can be one of the most fun ways to play this class. This is an awesome example on Harvest. I'm using the gloves of running urgently. We'll come to that a little bit later in the video. I'm able to get to the front lines very quickly and find an awesome position where I think surely at least one enemy is bound to come out. And here I hit the jackpot. I'm able to ambush these three enemies, get the drop on them and take them out no problem at all. As a heavy it's important to prioritise targets and not get too flustered when confronted with a sea of enemies and don't just start spraying and praying. Generally speaking it's a good idea to pick a single target and focus them down, unless of course you or your medic are in danger. If you have several targets available to you, you may want to prioritise weaker targets, people closer to you or high value targets such as an enemy medic. But generally speaking, if you've started to attack an enemy, it's often better to try and finish them off rather than switching targets. Here are two examples that show two slightly different scenarios. In this first example, I can see several enemies in front of me, so I pick one and I start focusing him. I then move on to a second enemy, and at this point, I spot a third enemy who's probably, in this situation, a bigger danger to me. But because I know this demo man must be super weak, I continue to focus him to finish the kill, and then move my attention onto the third enemy. Me. In this final example, I'm focusing an enemy down, but I start taking damage from behind, so I immediately switch my focus to the immediate danger at hand. So each scenario needs to be treated differently. It's down to game sense and having a feel for how the situation is playing out. 
Learning the heavy's effective range is massively important, because if you find yourself just sprinkling in damage from miles away, you're not contributing as much as you could be to the game. You'll need to learn which classes you can 1v1 and at which range. For example, if you're face to face with a pyro, but you're at kind of medium range, they haven't got a chance. Whereas if this was a soldier, he might have been able to peek around that corner and out damage you. The heavy is devastating at medium to close range, although in some situations against some classes there is such a thing as too close. For example, if you're face to face with a good scout at, at point blank range, they will dance around you and make you feel like a fool. Here's a simple example on bad water where I see the enemy team pushing the car, but at this range I feel like I'm unable to put out effective damage. So I take myself out of the enemy sight lines, close the ground between us and jump in to help stop the cart. When it comes to longer ranges, the only thing you're effective at taking out is the sentry gun, where you can sit outside its range and as long as it's not being healed up, you can slowly whittle it down. But when it comes to other classes, and especially of course the sniper, you should avoid long range sight lines at all costs. You should absolutely respect snipers. You may be tempted to try and shoot them to jolt their aim, but it's not worth it because a good sniper will take you out either way. You can peek snipers momentarily if they're not scoping in, but the longer they're scoped in, the more of a threat they are at taking you out in one shot. A final little bonus tip here, if you find yourself face to face with a heavy at fairly close range and you're both just holding down that left button, then sometimes crouching in this situation can make you a smaller target and help you win that duel. If you don't need to move anyway, you may as well try it out. So this is a fairly basic tip because with any class of course you don't want to die, but with heavy survival is even more of a priority because it's so slow to get you back to the front lines. And of course you stand out as a huge target, so for this reason you have to be extra risk averse, trying your best to avoid overextending or putting yourself in too much danger. You should also not be relying too much on your medic. I would advise to learn the class without a pocket first, and if ever a medic does come along, treat that as a nice bonus. Make sure you make good use of your sandwich if you're using it, or if not, the health packs around the map. Taking up positions near them and having an idea as to what you're going to do if you do start taking damage. As soon as you start to drop below around 200 health points, you really need to start thinking about topping yourself back up. One thing I've kind of noticed whilst playing heavy is that you can often dodge long range projectiles by simply changing direction the moment it's fired. If you're strafing in a single direction for a long time, a soldier or demo man will aim for where you're going to be in one or two seconds time, and so simply by changing directions the moment you see them fire, you can often negate a bunch of the damage. So this tip is a bit of a mixture, we're going to talk a little bit about tracking and some of the utility options around the heavy's minigun. So of course positioning and game sense is a huge part of the heavy's gameplay, but if you can't track the enemy, like I can't, then you're pretty much not going to be any use. This simply comes with practice, if you really want to take this seriously you may want to look into your interp settings, which I won't go into in this video, but by fine tuning this, you can make it feel like your shots are landing exactly where you're clicking. But once you get good at tracking, you'll be able to take out scouts and destroy bombing soldiers like some kind of anti-aircraft weapon, and it's super satisfying when you're able to do that. There's three little tips I wanted to briefly mention here. First of all, we talked about jumping around corners as you're spinning up, but in some situations it's actually better to be pre-firing and plowing around that corner, doing damage the moment it's possible. I find this particularly useful when trying to take out enemy sentry guns. Also, if you've trapped an enemy in a corner, in a similar way you can keep up that wall of bullets and not allow that enemy out without taking damage. A slightly more advanced tip, if you spot an enemy coming out from behind cover and they haven't spotted you, occasionally it's better to hold off on shooting at them until they're at a point where they can't retreat back to that cover. This is very similar to a tip you may have heard of before for mini sentries where if you build them facing a wall as an enemy comes around a corner it takes the sentry gun a second to turn around by which time the enemy are again too committed and can't retreat from the fire of that sentry gun. So yeah there's a lot of tips in this section and I'll just finish up with two last pointers. First of all you can use your mini gun to scan for spies which can be very useful and secondly of course it's one of the best weapons for clearing sticky traps, so bear that in mind too.
For this video, I tried to avoid weapon specific tips, but for these last two, we're gonna be taking a look at a couple of weapons. And first of all, the Sandwich, which is of course one of the better options for the heavy. Now, a little bit of Sandwich etiquette for you guys. Of course, make sure you share your food by right clicking. If you see anyone low calling for medic, they will appreciate your help very much. Second of all, eat quietly. Now this is something I learned when researching this video. The heavy has a very loud chewy nom nom sound and by simply using a short voice line, you can cancel out that sound and munch quietly. And finally, don't stare at others. That doesn't quite make sense because actually do stare at others. I just wanted it to fit the whole etiquette theme. But what I'm talking about here is making good use of the third person perspective. You can look around corners, check out what's going on and see if there's any threats coming up. Finally, another advanced tip. Bear in mind that the sandwich is charged with any health packs you pick up, but the sandwich itself essentially acts as a medium health pack. So if you ever see a small health pack, you can help your teammate out by throwing down a sandwich, picking up the small health pack to recharge your sandwich, and then your teammate has essentially got a medium health pack. And finally, I wanted to talk about the gloves of running awesomely. Because of their fairly recent nerf, I think these guys can sometimes get overlooked. But the time I've spent playing with these, I've found that they are absolutely freaking awesome. Of course, obviously they allow you to get to the front lines quicker. And so long as you're careful, there's really no downside. If you switch off them before you hit the front lines, you'll soon charge up to full health. Or better still, if you've got a medic on your team, you'll have no problems at all. Although occasionally, I've found my myself being ambushed by an enemy with only half health so you do have to be careful about that. But aside from getting to the front lines, there is so much more utility to this weapon. And one of the funnest thing to do with it is use it in a similar way to the escape plan. You can simply make incredible escapes with this thing because the enemy does simply not expect a heavy to suddenly start running way quicker. It's great for dodging rockets and throwing snipers off or simply just running away to quickly grab some health. This is an awesome example on Frontier where I have no idea how I survived this. I come around this corner and I'm faced with an ubered soldier. I take an awful lot of damage so I switch over to the gloves of running urgently. I'm able to duke him once, duke him twice, spin around, fly up here, get a little whip from my fellow soldier and I'm away and I survived and there's no way I could have done that without these gloves. So I think these are underrated and I love them and I won't have a bad word said against them, okay? And actually finally it's also worth mentioning that these are great for hunting down spies. Again because they don't really expect it. They think you're slow and cumbersome but if you see a spy in the distance you can quickly switch over to them like I do in this example here again on frontier this spy he's completely taken off guard although he's a bit of an idiot because he ran straight back at me but that's beside the point Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. That was 10 tips for heavy, although there must have been about 100 tips in there. So I hope that was useful for you guys. Let me know if there's anything I've missed out or if there's anything you disagree with. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video, which will probably be about the heavy update tomorrow.